70 years ago today, Pittsburgh's first TV station hit the air. WDTV eventually became KDKA. And today we're celebrating our 70th anniversary with a stroll down memory lane. Last hour, we looked back at some of the programs that we have aired and now some of the major news events that we've covered. Now, Stacey Smith shows us KDKA has been on the scene of breaking news from the very beginning. April 19. TWA Flight 400 crashes near Greater Pitt, killing 22 people. There were 14 survivors, and Bill Burns interviewed them in their hospital beds at Sewickley Hospital. Did you have any warning at all that you were going to crash? No, no warning at all. Nearly 40 years later, KDK was at the scene of another horrific plane crash when U.S. Air Flight 427 crashed on approach to Pittsburgh International Airport in 1994. All 132 people on board were killed. I've covered a number of plane crashes over the years being in this business, but I have never heard descriptions such as I have heard this evening. In 1979, KDKA was on the air within hours after the accident at Three Mile Island. Officials have declared an emergency at the crippled Three Mile Island nuclear power station near Harrisburg. We broke into programming in 1988 when an Ashland oil storage tank near Jefferson Hills split open, spilling millions of gallons of oil into the Monongahela River. And we stayed on the air for hours on end in 2001 during the terrorist attacks of 9-11. It's an unbelievable situation for Americans to face. It's something that we have never really dealt with since um, the bombing of Pearl Harbor so many years ago. We have reported on countless local crimes that have made national news. The Richard Baumhammer's murder spree in 2000. This gunfire stretching across two counties to the south and west of Pittsburgh. The killings at L.A. Fitness in Collier Township in 2009. The stabbing spree at Franklin Regional High School in Murraysville in 2014. And just a few months ago, the tragedy at the Tree of Life Synagogue in Squirrel Hill. My sources and I can confirm that 11 people uh, lost their lives today at Tree of Life uh, Synagogue at the hands of this, uh, this gunman. We have been here to help Pittsburgh navigate through some of the city's darkest days, the deaths of two sitting mayors. Richard Caligiuri had many great accomplishments during his life. Richard Caligiuri in 1988 and Bob O'Connor in 2006. O'Connor lived his dream, even if only for a few months. His legacy, though, will endure for much longer. As well as the murders of three Pittsburgh police officers in Stanton Heights in 2009. It is an historic time here in Pittsburgh, expected to be the largest procession and the largest memorial service ever in the city of Pittsburgh. And we have been here at some rather miraculous times as well, including 2002. All nine are alive. When a group of miners survived being trapped in the flooded Kew Creek mine for more than 78 hours. We have covered major weather disasters, the tornado outbreak of 1985. Well, Ray, we have a disaster on our hands tonight in Big Beaver Borough. I'm standing in front of what was a shopping center. We had ideal conditions yesterday. There's no doubt about it. Just take a look at it and you see why it happened. The Mount Washington tornado in 1998. This is ground zero, Allegheny County right now under a tornado warning. In a city built on three rivers, there have been far too many floods to count, including the flood of 1996. We went up about two feet or so between midnight and two o'clock this morning, Joe. Right. And in 2004, when several towns were left underwater by the remnants of Hurricane Ivan. I'm told by the old timers around here, this is a lot worse. Of course, we can't talk about the weather in Pittsburgh without discussing the blizzards of 1950 and 1993. Don't go out unless you absolutely have to. And the storm of 2010, which became known as Snowmageddon. We have traveled around the world on assignment. Ray Tannehill in Russia. Harold Hayes in the Middle East during the first Gulf War. Here there is no such thing as separation of church and state. Mary Rob Jackson in Vietnam 20 years after the fall of Saigon. Patty Burns at the Vatican with a group of local Catholics on a pilgrimage. A pilgrimage that brings them here to Rome, Italy and the visible center of the Roman Catholic Church, St. Peter's Basilica and the Vatican. Marie Torrey, Harold Hayes and I also made trips to the Vatican at various times. And in 1991, I also went to Israel with a group of local Jews on a trip called Homecoming 91. The lives of the people of Israel cannot be separated from their religions, and their religions cannot be separated from this land. Sometimes the news came to us. Okay, your Paul Martino is next. In 2005, a water main break just outside the KDKA studio left us flooded. 
This is the basement under KDKA, actually the garage where we keep the trucks that enable us to go live like this one. Part of KDKA's legacy was built on covering politics, like in the late 60s when Bill Burns and Al McDowell interviewed an unemployed actor named Ronald Reagan as he began a new career in politics. Why are you here, Mr. Reagan? You're a long way from the uh, sunny shores of California. Well, actually, on my way to Washington. Over the years, we've reported from several national political conventions. The question is whether Donald Trump has the answers that voters will buy. And also hosted many local candidate debates. KDKA has also had a long commitment to groundbreaking medical news, from covering Dr. Jonas Salk's work on the polio vaccine in the 1950s to Dr. Thomas Starzl's work on organ transplants in the 80s. It was 25 years ago, Starzl started to rewrite the medical books. To more recently, when a local man became the first patient in the country to receive the first new treatment for ALS in 20 years. After today, several other patients here in Pittsburgh are also in line to get the new treatment. We have watched some of Pittsburgh's most famous landmarks come down. <laughs> In 2001, we broadcast the implosion of Three River Stadium live, and then 11 years later. Saturday's demolition took down the first panel. There will be many more like it. We watched crews dismantle the Civic Arena piece by piece. And speaking of those famous venues, sports has always had a way of unifying the city, and it has had a home here on KDKA since the very beginning. We have been here for three of the Pirates' five World Series championships. What was the pitch you hit, Bill? It was a high fastball. A high fastball. That did it, and the Pirates are the world's champions for the first time since 25. All five of the Penguins' Stanley Cup championships. Now Alf Samuels is holding the cup up now back here. Ah! And all six of the Steelers' Super Bowl championships. You'll also get a chance to see that Vince Lombardi trophy, the all-time record number six. Wow, that seems like a lot, but that is oh, it's just a fraction of the news that we've covered in the 70 years so far. Incredible memories, yeah. and, you know, it seems like we were just celebrating the 50th. To me, it seems very recent, and another 20 years have gone by, and really, the story of KDK is the story of Pittsburgh. It really is. You yes. know, I want to go back to something, if I can, just for please, a second. I, I made mention of the, of the Stars Hold stories. That, mm -hmm. that, that was a huge, huge story in Pittsburgh in the 1980s. In fact, it helped to bring Pittsburgh back at a time when the steel mills were starting to close. It gave people a lot of hope because we became the transplant capital of the world because of that. And something else that has happened we haven't mentioned, that is KDK.com. Now you can find this, these new stories uh, that we do every day at KDK.com. And to take you back a little bit, we have now digitized that one of the stories I did on Tom Starzl, uh, that you can now find it at KDK.com. So if you want to go back in time and take a look at that in the 80s, I suggest you do. Great. So right. We certainly will. Our celebration not over. We're going to continue at 6, and we remember some of the pioneering journalists who laid the foundation of KDK's legacy, and the rest of us still doing our best to build upon it.